What's up YouTube? Mike Stone back again with Carts MD and today we have a little bit of a treat for you. We're going to install this double A arm 6 inch lift kit onto a mid 90's model club car DS. We're also going to be putting these 22 11 12 uh, tire and wheel package on today so stick around. Alright the next step is we're going to remove the hubcaps. That easy. Alright, after we've removed the hubcap, we're going to go ahead and remove the wheel. We're going to repeat that process on the opposite side. Alright, now that we got both front wheels off, we're going to go ahead and begin the next step which is dismantling the OEM suspension. Basically we're going to be taking out the A plates, the king pins, the spindle, the spring, uh, the shocks, all that's coming out. Alright, so there's the spindle and the hub removed. Now we're going to go ahead and work on the A plate. Alright, we got one bolt in there. It's kind of difficult to put in by yourself with one hand, but we just get one in there and now it's it, it's gonna it'll sit there so we can get the rest in. Alright, let me do that. Alright, so we're just going to put the heim joints in. Uh, that's how this particular kingpin, as it were, works. It just hooks up with heim joints at the upper and lower. So we're just going to screw those in. And that's what's uh, real good about these particular lift kits is they're fully adjustable. Alright, so now that my heim joint is in... We'll run this one in just a little more. And right now I ain't too particularly worried about the adjustment. Because we're going to have to fidget with that later anyhow. So they give you upper and lower uh, uh, torque bolts here. Um, they do send, in most of the kits, they'll send, uh, you know, if you get a double A arm especially, they'll send some thread lockers. So let's go ahead and apply that and get that in there. Alright, that's 
Watch our thread locker on there. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Right? If you buy this kit from us, you'll have to do it with one hand too. So, <laughs> Especially if you film it. Next, we're going to go ahead and tackle the hub. So pretty much we just take the, uh, the pin out. There's a pin in there and a dust cap. We take that out. We'll take the main nut off. Usually on an older worn out cart, you can do all this by hand. You don't need any tools. The hub should just pop right off there. But you want to be careful because your bearings can fall out. So you just hold them in there. See there? The bearings can just pop right out on you. But that's alright because they go in just as easy too. Put that guy back in there. Go ahead and screw the castle nut back on. And she's a bit of a messy job, so get you a rag. Now, some may disagree with it, but I always put these on hand tight. Because here's the thing, you can put them on hand tight enough to where this won't spin very free. So, there's no sense to put a tool on there. What I'll do is if you'll notice the hole, there's a cat, the, uh, the castle nut has a uh, cotter pin that goes in there. So, what I'll do is I'll just tighten it up as much as I can by hand and then back it off to the nearest hole that lines up, and that's it. And then, all we gotta do is slide our cotter, cotter pin back down in there. So if you do everything right, you're going to end up with a box of parts. Let's see here, you're going to have a leaf spring. You're going to have a left and right spindle assembly there. And you're going to have two A plates. All right. But at any rate, there's the front end on. There's the tire. Tire and wheel. The back end now is our next project. So we're going to go ahead and start by removing the wheel covers, obviously. And we'll remove the tire. All right, and there's the tire removed. We'll go on around to the other side and we'll do it. Give me a little preview of what the rear end looks like. So this is your shackles. We'll be removing uh, the lower rear shackle here. I can take the bolt out there. Uh, the upper shackle, we'll be removing that one as well. Um, we'll be removing the U-bolt. The U-bolt that holds the rear end to the uh, spring. Uh, and then after we uh, remove those items, the spring should go ahead and fall out of place. And then basically an overview of what's going to happen 
is the spring is then going to be on top of the axle and of course there's a block in there and that's what lowers the axle and gives the cart the lift. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. was on there. I have to take the uh, the brake clevis pin out, and to do that, we need to have the brakes released. If the brakes are locked down, there'll be so much tension on it you won't get it off. So now we're going to go ahead up here and take a. Uh, I was just going to try to slip it around, but you can't. This guy's got no bushings up there, so we're going to have to replace those. Let me show you that. Zoom in on that so you can see it. See that? The end of that spring. See how it's flopping all around there? It's because it's got no bushings in it. You see this end. This end still has a bushing in it. So no big deal. That end up there, a lot of times companies will cut, that's a corner companies will cut. They won't change that upper one because you won't know the difference. That one usually doesn't give you any problems. But it, it's just as important as the rest of them. Uh, but most customers don't know it's there, so a lot of companies will just uh, bypass that one and charge you the full rate anyway. So we're going to get this taken apart right up there, get some new bushings in it, and we'll be back with you. Alright, we got the, uh, the spring in the right orientation now on top of the axle. And we got that bushing replaced. That'll be a little tough to see. Yeah, maybe you just have to take my word for it. It's there. <laughs> it's nice and solid now. So this is your riser block. The longest portion ends up towards the rear of the cart. And wherever your U-bolt was, we're going to get rid of that. We're just going to put this right down into that recess. Bring you in for a closer look. See there? See how it just sits in that block? That's where that'll live. Alright. Now, this is going to end up going over that, but at an angle. So the front tine goes in front of the axle, and the rear tine goes behind the axle. Just drop. Oh, I forgot our shock plate. That's where the shock's going to mount through. Because now the original shock plate will be down here, so that won't work out. plate will go back on but before we do that part 
we got to put the spacer plate in. So the lift kit comes with these little nuts and bolts for the spacer plate. These guys right there. So basically, just put the bolt through there, the nut on. And so what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to interface between this and the bottom of the axle. So your spring before had a knot. That notch, that lined up with the hole. Well now that, that notch ain't going to be there. It's just a plain bottom of the smooth bottom of the axle. Well you got to have something in there to lock it in. All right, so it doesn't move around. That's what it registers against the, uh, the brake plate and against the hole that's in the bottom of the axle. That way this is held nice and tight and secure and it ain't moving around. What that's for. Get that tightened up on there. All right, so you can see now the spring is on top of the axle with the riser block and the shock plate. The shock's now back on. We've tightened and rebushinged our uh, front spring. Uh, we've tightened the back spring. All the bolts are tight. At this point, you really want to go back over all your work, both on the front and the rear of the lift kit. You really want to make sure everything's in place and tight. Uh, the last thing you want is to be driving down the road and have some of this fall apart on you. So we're going to get the wheels on it and that will complete this job.